actually ended up stopping halfway down the mountain. A tree stopped me, and they said if that tree wasn't there, um, I probably would have died because I would have gone all the way down the mountain, and I was already, already in very critical condition. My name is John Gibbs. Here's my story. I was born in Dallas, Texas. I moved to Atlanta when I was two years old. Two older brothers and an older sister. Um, parents have been married for 25 years, so we're all happily married, happy family. <laughs> I know you guys have probably heard my voice, know it's a little laugh. So my grandma lives in the mountains of Jasper in Blue Ridge. And we were, she has a golf cart because it's a country club neighborhood. And so we were driving down her mountain and um, there's no guardrails on the roads. And so I was on the back right of the golf cart and we hit like a pothole in the road, on the side of the road, and it tipped down the mountain. And so as it tipped down the mountain, I'm just sitting there looking down the mountain and I know where to go. Um, my brother, my two brothers with me, my grandma's with me, they were able to jump out, but I was kind of stuck tumbling down the mountain with the golf cart. Um, golf cart landed me a couple times. It put me in a medically induced coma for 14 days and then ICU for an extra three days. And with that wreck, um, I got put in, I had head trauma, and I broke my Adam's apple. And so Adam's apples don't heal, <laughs> um, coincidentally. So I've been kind of like stuck with this fractured voice for 11 years for almost all my life. When I woke up from the coma, I was, I was confused in the moment. Um, I remember I asked my mom, I was like, what happened? And then as soon as she said golf cart, everything kind of just replayed in my mind and I remembered everything that happened. When I woke up, I could talk. It was a lot more raspy than this. And it was more deep. It was deep in this, which is crazy because I was eight years old. You can imagine an eight year old with a deeper voice and a rasper voice than this. Um, I got a lot weirder looks than I do today. I always got, I did get asked questions in elementary school, not as much, and I understood the questions because I understood that my Adam's apple was sticking out in fourth grade and um, people didn't understand why. But um, middle school is kind of, yeah, when I started to gain that insecurity about how I don't have a voice and I don't have much to say anymore. It was the first class of sixth grade, and um, I raised my hand for a question. And I started talking, and the dude, another dude next to me, stopped stopped me and asked me. He was like, "What the hell's in your throat? And why does your voice sound like that?" And I was just like, I was in shock. I was like, "How could anyone just be that blatant to a, you know, to someone like that?" Um, and so I just kind of sat back down, and the teacher didn't defend me. No one really said anything. Everyone was just kind of like, like an awkward silence. And then after class, the teacher kind of pulled me aside and started lecturing me about like wanting attention and faking my voice. And so I had to give my teacher my story, even though I didn't want to because I was just insulted by my teacher and my, my fellow student. After that, I got home and I told my dad what happened. And I broke down then. Um, but really, it's an, like, hmm. When I got into high school was really when I started to question, like, if there is a God, you know, why would he do this to me? <laughs> you know, it was like, why would he give me this broken voice? Um, and I really started to question, like, God's goodness and grace, because I've been hearing about it my whole life with my dad being a preacher. I've always heard about faith and grace and all these things, and I was like, I don't see that anywhere in my life. Throughout all high school, I struggled with just in insecurity, really. And um, God just kept on tearing down walls. And so um, I went to a student retreat that I didn't want to go to, that I was kind of like, got pushed to go to. So I feel like that was the Lord's timing that I ended up going to that retreat. And that's where I ended up giving my life to Christ. Um, I was kind of at rock bottom before that. That wasn't really when I accepted my voice. Um, it was more about accepting that like, um, you know, God has a plan for me. God has a purpose for like my life. And um, God didn't do that to me, you know, sort of thing. It was more like God saved me from it because I could have died on that wreck and I didn't. I once felt as if I didn't have anything to give because of my broken voice. I thought my voice was broken. And then I realized that God's given me, vo given me this voice to talk to broken people and talk to people who feel like they don't have anything else to give. So when I figured out my voice would never be the same, I was heartbroken. But then I realized that God gave me that voice um, and that it isn't broken, that it can be used to change the world. Just remember that God has a purpose for everything and that um, he, he can use you um, 
to reach people just like you. <laughs>